Today I will be reviewing the Samsung Waterwall dishwasher. This model is model number 9550. I want to go over some of the key features of this dishwasher for you. As the name implies, this dishwasher features Samsung's Waterwall technology. What that is, is inside there are six streams of water that spray onto a moving track that literally forms a wall of water to clean the dishes. Six streams are used for normal wash, with three streams on the left and three streams on the right side of the dishwasher, and eight streams when you're using the Zone Boost feature. Zone Booster, that's another feature of the Samsung dishwashers. You have an option of setting the left side of the left side of the lower rack of the dishwasher to be zone boosted, which essentially increases the three streams of water to five streams. The zone booster is used to clean baked on food stuff that wouldn't otherwise come off with a normal wash or without pre-cleaning first. Another feature of this dishwasher is the auto release door. What this does is at the end of the cycle, the door automatically opens about 5 inches to allow steam to escape while a fan creates a curtain of air to protect your countertop. The auto release feature is on by default from the factory, but you can go through the settings to turn it off if you don't like it. And there is a reason for the auto release feature though, as these Samsung dishwashers only air dry the dishes, hence the auto release is there to help with the air drying. This dishwasher is also rated at 42 decibel sound level. To put that into perspective, a garbage disposable is around 80 decibels, a shower is around 70 decibels, conversational speech or an air conditioner is going to be around 60, a refrigerator is around 50 decibels, standard desktop computer is about 40 decibels, and a whisper is rated at 30 decibels. So this dishwasher sound level is close to the hum of a standard desktop computer. And finally, these Samsung dishwashers is Energy Star certified, meaning the dishwasher is energy efficient and uses less energy compared to other dishwashers that are not Energy Star certified. Basically, it saves you money over time on your energy bill compared to non-Energy Star appliances. And those are the main features that Samsung boasts for this particular dishwasher. There are other features I'll touch up on as well though. As you can see here, the touch controls for the dishwasher are located on the top of the door, putting them mostly out of view when the door is closed. It really depends on how much of a gap you have between the top of the door and your countertop will determine how well you can see these controls when your dishwasher is closed. Now right here, you've got the power button. Next to that, you have seven cycles, and from left to right, you've got auto. And this cycle is used to detect the level of soil and automatically initiates the optimal cycle after a few minutes of operation. Next to that is the normal cycle. You use this cycle for normally sold soil dishes. The Energy Star rating is based off of this particular cycle. Next to that, you've got the heavy. As the name implies, this cycle is for heavily soiled dishes. And next to that one is the delicate cycle. You use this cycle for soiled, fragile items like fine glassware and crystal glassware, wine glasses. And this cycle shouldn't be used for any other type of glassware though, just for the, just for the delicate ones like the crystals. Next to that is the Express 60. And this is used if you have lightly soiled dishes or you don't want it to run a full, a full length, which is usually on average about two and a half hours. The Express 60 will do the wash and rinse in 60 minutes instead. When you use the Express 60, you're not able to use the Speed Booster option or the Zone Booster option, which I'll show you later. And actually for the Delicate Cycle, you're not able to use the, the Zone Booster or the Sanitize options with this one. And here you've got the Rinse Only feature. And this one here is used if you're not planning to wash your dishes at that particular moment and you just want to run it through a rinse cycle. This particular cycle is about 14 minutes and it only runs water through it. You don't want to add uh, detergent when you're using a rinse only cycle. And next to that, you have the self clean feature. And the self clean on this one is how you use it is when you power the system, the dishwasher on. If this light, it's actually a little light, it would be right there if it was on, but the light would blink a little bit to let you know that the dishwasher needs to be self-cleaned. <clears throat> At that point, you would just go ahead and hit the self-clean button, press start, 
close the door and it will go ahead and run through its cycle. When you use the self-clean, you want to make sure the dishwasher is empty and you don't use any detergent with it either. Now moving on, next to that we've got the lower rack options. And this one here means that only the lower rack will be washed so the upper rack should be left empty. And next to that is going to be the zone boost feature that I mentioned earlier. When you use this feature, the left side of the lower rack will be using five streams of jet instead of the standard three and the right side will continue with the normal three three streams so this side will get the extra boost of power cleaning next to this we've got three more options you can select from here you've got the speed booster which as the name implies it reduces the washing time next to that is the high temp wash what this does, it raises the main wash temperature to improve cleaning for loads containing tough baked on food. The high temp wash occurs during the wa actual washing cycle. And next to that, you've got the sanitize button. What this does, this option heats up the water to over 163 degrees Fahrenheit during the final rinse feature. Now going next to this one is, there would normally be a display listed here and it would have basically as I mentioned time left or it would show you how much time is in each cycle that you selected once the dishwasher is powered on this will actually be populated with the time display next to that is your delay start you would use this feature if you don't want to start the dishwasher immediately you'll have the option of delaying it anywhere from one hour to 24 hours in one hour increments and then the last button is going to be the start button which also doubles as your cancel and drain button if for some reason you need to stop the cycle or you just wanted to test the dishwasher you would hold the start button down for three seconds it would cancel the the cycle it's currently doing and it will also go ahead and initiate the drain to drain any water out of it okay and those are the options on your door and what we'll go ahead and do is show you what it would look like once you power it on and you hear the little tone go off showing that it came on and here's the display I was telling you about and as you choose a display you will notice that the time left changes here's auto and this will be the normal wash heavy cycle and your delicate your express 60 rinse only your self clean now let's go back to the normal and we'll add the speed booster to it you'll see it drops it now down to one hour and 55 minutes here's the high temp wash added to it and the sanitize feature added to it and let me go ahead and start a cycle in here Just press the start button and you close it you see the little blue light that comes on and that tells you that the dishwasher is about to run I don't know how well you can see it here, but it's got two and a half hours in this particular cycle. So I will go ahead and let this run, and we'll get back again once it gets close to finishing so I can show you how the auto release looks. All right, I'll see you then. There's something I wanted to show you here, real quick. There are still 57 minutes left in the cycle. However, if for some reason, you say you started the cycle and you forgot you needed to uh, put an extra spoon in there and you open it up now as you can see the number is flashing that means that the dishwasher is on hold and it's not running anymore now you might think like if you just simply close it it'll restart however as you can see the number is still flashing and there's no blue light which means that it is still on hold in order to get it started back up again, you actually need to press the start button, close it, and now you see the number is no longer flashing, and the blue glow came back on. And that means the cycle is now re is continuing where it left off. All right. Well, I'll get back to you again once the cycle is much closer to the end, and we'll see how that auto release feature works. See you guys in a bit. Okay, as you can see here, we are now down to the five minute mark. This door will be opening up in between the next 30 and 60 seconds now.
I don't know if you can hear that, but the fan just kicked in. You can hear the doors creaking a little, so it's slowly starting to open, it looks like. Yep, here it comes. And there's that rush of steam coming out of it and the fan blowing it right at me. And this will continue on for another four minutes. It looks like it has in the cycle and then the fan and everything will shut off. It does play a little melody once it, once it finishes, so we will come back when the timer is about ending so you can hear the melody. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but the fan is still blowing inside. And there was the long melody that plays when it ends that you may or may not like after a while. But that's it. After this, once the interior has a little bit chance to dry just a little, we'll go ahead and look at the inside of it as well. When you look inside, you'll see that this dishwasher uses a stainless steel tub. In general, there are two major types of tubs you'll find inside a dishwasher. Stainless steel and plastic. There are a few advantages to having a stainless steel tub. One is less noise. The heavy steel walls of the tub usually absorb most of the noise the water makes when the cleaning process is running, which is one reason why the dishwasher is able to achieve such a low sound rating. Another is energy efficient. Stainless steel tubs tend to be more energy efficient as the steel is capable of absorbing more heat than its plastic counterparts and so it needs less power during the drying process. Cleaner dishes. Stainless steel walls can sustain temperatures of more than 160 degrees Fahrenheit. The hot water accentuates the detergent's washing power leading to cleaner, well sanitized dishes. Something that plastic tubs are less efficient at doing. Durability. Stainless steel tubs are less prone to cracking due to the strong, thick walls. Along with its pros, there are of course some downsides to stainless steel tubs. One is they tend to be a lot more expensive than the plastic counterparts. And compared to plastic tubs, stainless steel ones will get some stains if you have hard water that contains a lot of calcium and therefore may require more frequent cleaning in the interior. Now if we remove or move the lower track out of the way, You will see the spray nozzles and the track to create the wall of water when the dishwasher is running. Right here you can see there are actually two rows of nozzles here. Three on the bottom, two on the top. And then on the right hand side you have another three nozzles. This is the zone booster feature I had mentioned earlier where normal run you would have three nozzles and three nozzles on left and right running at the same time. And when you activate the zone booster, the extra two nozzles will also start coming on in order to get the extra power that it needs. The way this works is that the water will spray out of these nozzles, hit this track, and it forces the water straight up into pretty much a wall, which I'm guessing is how they come up with the water wall name. Now, if you look at the actual rack itself, you move it back in, you will see here on the right hand side the cutlery rack. It comes with two sets. All of these slots right here is basically for your silverware. If you have silverware that doesn't fit in it, you can easily just lift it up. 
and you can just place your silverware in here as is or if you like it down which is the way I prefer that way all the silverware is separated and you don't have to worry about them touching each other and worrying about whether or not they get cleaned and if you don't need both of these or either of them you can just lift it right up because it's just got a little latch here you can just pull it right up and use it with one or none now looking at the upper rack You can see here on the left hand side they have something that they call an easy caddy. Basically the idea of it is that you would place long utensils like spatulas, serving spoons or other similar items. That way you can place it up here and be out of the way of any dishes that you may have sitting here on the upper rack. If you don't like it or you don't want to use it just like the lower cutlery this can be removed. You just have to lift it up and pull it off the rack. Now on the right hand side they have what they call um, I guess they just call it the glass support. Basically what it is if you've got like tall glasses, wine glasses or whatnot you can set it in here and this can be used to support it and if you don't use it you can just lift it up and get it out of the way. Simple as that. And the upper track also has the ability to raise two inches from its normal height you basically have two two latches like this on both sides and you actually grip it on both sides at the same time in order to lift it you just lift it up and let go and let it sit down when you don't need it just push it in and let it drop simple as that mine was already raised on the two inch height and this was the review of the Samsung Waterwall dishwasher again this one was the model 9550 I hope you enjoyed watching it.